Hello, in this session we will look at an introduction to identity providers. Now identity providers is another way that uh, we can give access to your AWS console. So um, we've already seen how you can make use of your IAM users to uh, give the access. So like if you want to share your account uh, with uh, multiple people, we can create them as IAM users. And then we can uh, ask those users to utilize this IAM user accounts to log into the same account. In the last session, we looked at how you can make use of your IAM roles to log in from one AWS account to another AWS account. Uh, likewise, we have these identity providers, which is another way that can be used to basically provide access to your AWS accounts. All right. So in this session, we will look at an introduction to this. And in the next session, I'll show you an example of uh, how we can make use of your identity providers to give access to your AWS account. So IAM identity providers can be used if you already manage user identities outside of AWS instead of creating IAM users in your AWS account. Now, one way that you can give access to your AWS account is by creating IAM users. So if you have like, let's say 10 users, you will be creating those 10 users as IAM users, and then you'll be giving access to those users so that they can log into your account. Now, you might also have a scenario where you already have a separate system that you are using to manage your user identities. You already have a different tool using which you are managing your user identities. Now, if you want to use that existing user identities to uh, log into the AWS account, that's where we can make use of your identity provider. So with your identity providers, we won't be creating any IAM user accounts. Rather, we will be using the existing identities, the, the third party tool or any other tool that you're using to manage your user identities. We will be using that to uh, provide the access to your AWS account. So uh, with an identity provider, we can manage the user identities outside of AWS. So basically under this, uh, we won't be creating any identities like your users um, uh, within the AWS account. Uh, these users will be outside the AWS account. And then we can give these external user identities the necessary permissions that they can access within your AWS account. So again, under this, uh, we can give access to different, different people. However, the only uh, difference would be that these user identities are not inside the AWS account, they are outside the AWS account. So this is helpful if your organi organization already has its own identity system, such as a corporate user directory. You know, like, like I said, you already have a, a corporate directory that you're using to manage the user um, uh, permissions, the user creations and all those things. Then we can make use of your identity provider. So it is also useful if you're creating a mobile app or a web app that requires access to your AWS resources. So maybe you have an application that you're running and this application needs access to different, different services within AWS, maybe the EC2 instances or the S3 bucket or the RDS, then also we can make use of your identity providers. So when you use an IAM identity provider, you do not have to create custom sign in code or manage your own user identities. The IDP which stands for identity provider provides all that for you. So the advantage of this is you don't have to write any custom code. You don't have to manage any user identities. You can use the existing users to um, give the access to your AWS account. So your external users sign in through a well-known IDP such as login with Amazon, login with uh, uh, Facebook, login with Google. So you might have seen this uh, with uh, your different different applications. So one, let's say you have a new application and you have the option to sign up to that application or you can sign up using your existing Google account. So in this case, your Google will be your identity provider. So you're using your existing user identities to log into the different different applications. The same we can do with your uh, AWS account as well. So you can give those external identities the necessary permissions to use the AWS resources in your account. So you can define the necessary permissions as to what those external identities can do when they log into your AWS account. So IAM identity providers help keep your AWS account secure because you do not have to distribute or embed long-term security credentials such as access keys in your application. So the main advantage of this is again, you don't have to generate any long-term credentials. You don't have to 
store those credentials within your application. Uh, this will utilize uh, your temporary credentials, which will be more secure than maintaining long term credentials uh, like your IAM user credentials. So to use an IDP, you can create an IAM identity provider entity to establish a trust relationship between your AWS account and the identity provider. So here you will have the AWS account and then you'll also have your identity provider and you will be basically establishing a trust relationship between these two platforms. All right. Now, when we talk about your uh, uh, identity providers, IAM, it supports two types. You have the Open ID Connect and then you have the SAML Authentication uh, version 2.0, which stands for Security Assertion Markup Language. So you can either go with the Open ID Connect or you can go with your SAML Authentication. So let's talk a bit more on each of these. So first, we will talk about your uh, Open ID Connect, which is your Web Identity Federation. So imagine that you are creating a mobile app. All right. Now, this mobile application needs access to different different AWS resources, such as uh, you have a game that runs on a mobile device and this game stores the information about the player and the score information. And let's say this information gets stored on your S3 bucket or your DynamoDB. Now, whenever you write such an app, your app needs to make request to AWS services to the AWS resources that must be signed with an AWS access key. So basically your mobile app will need to have the necessary permissions so that it can access the necessary resources and the services within AWS, right? So like, let's say EC2, S3, RDS and different, different services. Now, uh, Amazon strongly recommends that we do not store or we do not embed the credentials within the app. So we don't, uh, AWS recommends from a security perspective that we should not be storing any long-term credentials uh, within the app that a user downloads to a device even in an encrypted store. So basically, uh, it's a big no when it comes to storing your credentials within your mobile app. So it could be your access key, it could be your passwords. We should not be storing that in the mobile app. Instead, AWS recommends that you build your app so that it requests the temporary AWS security credentials dynamically when needed using your web identity federation. So whenever your mobile app needs the uh, uh, credentials, it will utilize these temporary credentials, which will give the necessary access. So in this case, we can utilize the open ID connect, which will generate the temporary credentials and your mobile app will use these temporary credentials and authenticate to AWS and use the different different services and the resources. Okay, so that's where you can utilize your open ID connect. So the supplied temporary credentials map to an AWS role. So here again, this is the other use case of your IAM role. So in the last session, we looked at how we can make use of your IAM role to log in from one AWS account to another AWS account, right? So identity providers is another use case where we can make use of your IAM role, which will provide you the temporary credentials. And this IAM role has only the permissions needed to perform the tasks required by the mobile application. All right. So again, you are, you will be defining the necessary permissions. The next option you have is your SAML 2.0. So SAML, it stands for security assertion markup language. So AWS supports identity federation with SAML 2.0, which is an open standard that many identity providers use. Now this feature, it provides you with SSO login so that users can log in to the AWS management console or call the API operations without having to create an IAM user for everyone in your organization. So with this, you can either implement your SSO authentication or you can uh, give users the API access so that they can perform the API operations by utilizing this uh, IAM role. So that's basically where your SAML can be implemented. So by using SAML, you can simplify the process of configuring federation with AWS because you can use the IDPs service instead of writing custom identity proxy code. So with this, you don't have to write any custom code. You can utilize the SAML. Um, you have the integration between your IAM and the SAML and you can give your third party applications. That is, you can enable SSO. So you can utilize your existing user identities to log into your AWS console. So IAM's federation supports uh, these use cases. So federated uh, access to allow your user or application in your organization to call AWS API operations. So uh, you can give access to perform API calls, API operations, 
and also you can implement your web based single sign on to the AWS management console from your organization. So you can also implement an SSO so that you can your users will utilize this SSO to log into the uh, AWS management console. So with this, you don't have to create any IAM users uh, uh, within the AWS. You can utilize your existing user identities which are outside of AWS and they can start logging into the AWS management console. So that's basically your identity providers. Uh, in the next session, I will show you an example of how we can use these identity providers. So I'll show an example with your SAML authentication. Uh, that's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.